Um, Maybe she is great. She is not Miss Universe. I'm Gabby, that's Jordan. Red flag, red flag. I'm sure, I, I know I'm the villain in that story. Happy St. <laughs> Patrick's Day. Happy St. Patrick's Day. <laughs> it won't be St. Patrick's Day anymore when well, this airs. Just know we wished you one. Today we're talking true crime. I don't know if it's appropriate that we're wearing these for true we crime. We should have worn these for the conspiracy theory episode. No, we're kind of look like aliens. <laughs> the lizard people. We we are lizard people. <laughs> That's next month. <laughs> or two months from now. Yeah. Regardless, we're here today to actually talk about some true crime. Um, we're going to talk about Madeline McCann. And here's why. It's an old case. But there have been some new advancements, so we're going to go over it. I feel like people have been talking about Madeline McCann's case for, like, years. Like, it's one of those cases that never really... Well, I've got some facts for you. It stopped talking about, you know? Well, that's because it's the most popularized in the media case ever um, that's worldwide. Do you not like my margarita? I just don't think this tastes like a margarita. It's triple sec margarita mix and tequila. Is it? Yeah, a lot of triple sec, though. I did not hold yeah. back on the triple sec. <laughs> Yummy. <laughs> Anywho. Shiggy. Give me the facts. So, it is one of the most widely ever talked about worldwide. And it just so happens to that they spent $10 million on this investigation, the British government. What? $10 million. It's a lot for a wait, stupid question. She went missing in Portugal. She did. So... Madeline McCann, let's let's back up. We have not even told them. I'm sure you guys do for the most part, but we're gonna do a little because this is synopsis. I'm so sorry. If you're disappointed, but I'm hot. I know. I need a little freedom too. Unzip me. Well, <laughs> help. This is how the lizard people get unzipped. <laughs> okay. So, Madeline McCann is a young girl that went missing in um, Algarve, which is actually where we're going for my bachelorette party. Spooky. Should we go like hunting for Madeline yeah. McCann? Should we that should be go, a day? You know, we should do, we should go to where she went missing. Um, Maid of Honor, Jordan, not this Jordan, other Jordan. Jordan. We would like to go to um, Praia de la Luz, which is where she went missing. Apartment 5A, right? 5D, 5A. One of those. <laughs> That's where we're going to go. So, basically, this little girl went missing while her um, family was on holiday. They are British. Um, I guess they regularly visited there. It was one of those things where all of these families kind of visited and went together. And it's like yeah. that summer vacation. And this was back before, like, you know, you were really worried about watching your kids 24 seven. It was That's very like 17 years ago, right? I think 15 okay. close somewhere around there. Um, but basically this child went missing. There's a lot of controversy around it about how it happened, where she went, what happened, everything like that. So we're going to dive into a couple of the facts, and then I think we go into, like, theories. I want to hear what you think actually happened, because we both did our own separate, like, little digging into it, because um, I have opinions, but I have a couple. Like, I'm not sold. Like, there's not one that I'm, I'm like, not this is either. it. Me neither. But, so we'll get to that, and then there has been a giant update in the case that I do want to talk about. I don't know if you saw that, but since 2022 and as of recently, like, the last month, there's been another update. So, Madeline McCann, you know, she went missing... Um, the family was out with other adults. They had this kind of group and they're actually, their group has a name. It's the, sorry, we don't have fingers. <laughs> I have to use my nose. The Tapas Seven yes. is what they call them. Because they always went to the Tapas Bar. Right? Yes. And what they would do is they'd put all of the kids in one apartment and put them to bed. And then they'd send a parent, they say every 15 to 20 minutes to go check on them. But I, doubt that. I heard it was like every 30 minutes. I heard they 15 would... to 20. Okay. But that being said, regardless, it's like. You really think they were going every 15 to 20 minutes? No. Especially if they're drinking. Yeah, like, I don't think so. Like, you're not losing track of time. Exactly. So, in between, at one point when, you know, the McCann's checked on the kids, another person checked on the kids, and then magically, poof, she's she's gone. Yeah. Um, It started out where they all just thought, you know, for sure she was kidnapped. The parents were not looked at at first, but their over-involvement in wanting to be covered in the media made a lot of people suspicious. They really loved the attention, the limelight. They were not afraid of talking. But why do people say that they loved it? Like, have they come out and said that they liked the attention? No, 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 no. But it's just, there's there's definitely a piece of, like, when you're that heavily involved in the media and you don't look as a certain kind of sad, obviously, we know. Yeah. Like, that there's, people have sadness in all different forms, but a lot of people get upset when, like, you don't have a particular type of sad, you know? Yeah. And they just weren't exhibiting that, and people just were suspicious. So, like, that was a whole thing with them. 
the theories kind of lie along. People have stated that they've seen a suspicious man walking around. There's been a couple of different suspects over the years. No one was ever proven. Um, and then there was, of course, the, you know, is it the parents? Is it somebody they know? Was it one of the other parents? So the top of seven were, like, widely discussed as being a problem. Um, and the other biggest thing with this case that's, like, so noticeable, which is, like, great, we hope nothing happens to us in Portugal, apparently the Portuguese police handled this terribly. People were tramping around the crime scene, making a mess. They were letting just anybody come in. <laughs> I just knocked on wood. Jordan's that like, we don't need anything happening. It's okay. Kyle would come get us. We're there for a good time. <laughs> Kyle <laughs> is Liam Neeson, so, like, he'd find us. I genuinely, strongly believe my dad used to make that joke all the time when I was a kid that, like, he wasn't Liam Neeson and he couldn't come find me, you know, from, like, the movie yeah, Taken. Yeah. Um but then he also would say things like, but I could probably find somebody that I know that could come get you, but yeah. I can't come get you. He doesn't, but my dad loves to be like, I have this particular set of skills. All the time. He quotes that movie way too often. But, um. That is so funny. I wonder, has he seen the newer ones? Like the ones after the first We've one? seen first, second, third. Yeah. yeah. We love them. That's like yeah. our daddy daughter movie. Is that um, weird? No, I love that movie. I love <laughs> like, all of them. They're so good. Of all to be like a dad daughter movie, like we like take it. <laughs> but, um. It's funny now, because now I'm marrying a guy that could be a Liam yeah. Neeson, so, like, I bet you my dad feels like, like, he's it's just... Like I found someone. <laughs> just, like, I knew we'd figure this out. <laughs> but, um, yeah, so apparently the Portuguese police handled this absolutely garbage, so that was, like, a huge problem in the case as well. So a lot of evidence was not properly worked through. Um, I want to say it was, like, weeks after they decided to go through the apartment again with a dog, you know, like a police dog. And it hit on something underneath the sink, and it had blood, and then it hit on something in the car. And I've heard that it hit on one of, like, their suitcases. So that, to me, leads to, like, that's where, like, a lot of the suspicion from the parents came as well. So you've got the parents as this suspect. You have people saying that they did see a strange man walking around. Um, We have to take into account that, like, they were in a country that... At this point, I mean, Portugal is blowing up now. I mean, we see it on social media media all the time. It's, like, more of a popular place. But Portugal wasn't super, like, popping in these days. Like, it was a cool vacation spot, but it wasn't something people knew about. So a lot of speculation comes around human trafficking as well. Yeah, I've seen that. So that's kind of, like, what we're working with facts-wise. Just me using my nose again. Let's see. We like to reference our notes because we got called out on our last crime episode for, like, not having facts, right? Oh, my God, these facts facts. There, he's <laughs> always here. So basically, that's kind of the outline of the case okay. and, like, what's happened. I mean, there's a lot of little mini details and, like, suspects that were cleared and things like that. Um, but kind of the speculation is is either, A, the parents did it, B, human trafficking, C, just a creepy guy that killed her, and then who knows? She could be, like, off in the water for all we know. Like, she could be out in the middle of the ocean. Yeah. Um, yeah, so those are kind of what we're working with. What are your thoughts? Give me some of, like, your information okay. you found. I have a couple of theories that I found from a TikTok video. Actually. Of course. Of course you did. I fucking love TikTok. Um, okay. I don't even think I saved it. Damn it. Hold on. Hold on, guys. <laughs> I'm go sorry. We're my, really bad at research. My saved videos. Here we go. Here we go. You know what we should do with this video? We should green screen our bodies. I would like the Sahara Desert. <laughs> across my body right now okay so (laughs) there is one theory that the human trafficking theory Mm -hmm. that they paid someone to come in because of the money so it could the the first theory with human trafficking is they needed the money so they sold it right okay the second theory is how most human trafficking goes you know the parents don't sell they get abducted yeah they get abducted that's the word um, but there's an interesting fact to this trafficking theory. Okay. So when there was a fundraiser for Madeline McCann, do you know who attended that fundraiser? Who? Jeffrey Epstein and Ghislaine Maxwell. Is this, this is perfect because this is the last episode of our crime and I know our conspiracy theory is like in a month, but that it's leads weird, right in. Right? We'll have to bring that back up. Okay. There is another theory. Okay. Someone just texted me that they're getting here in five. So that's awkward. Um, We're about to go out, but we decided podcasting was way more important. Yeah. So there's another theory that the guy that came in. So in their friend group, the South of Seven, 
they took turns going in every 30, 15, 30 minutes, whatever, to check on him. The Before they realized and she was realized she was missing, the guy came in, noticed her door was wide open. Noticed her door was wide open, right? Okay. Didn't check on them. Yes, I've seen that. Left. Yeah. And then when the mom came back, she was frantic because she was missing, right? Okay. What if the guy had something to do with it? So that could be a possibility. So here's my opinions on the human trafficking thing. Um, I had heard, like, that they had sold her, things like that. Um, I have a hard time with that one. I feel like that seems a little far-fetched to me in the sense that, I don't know. To me, it's just, like, I don't see that happening. I think, and this is going to sound really morbid and bad, but I've been listening for a while to this podcast that talks about human trafficking, but in the sense of, like, parents trafficking their children. But you make a lot more money trafficking your child by keeping your child. And so that's called something else. It's called it's not called sex trafficking. Or is it called sex trafficking versus human trafficking? Because there's two very different ones. It's still considered trafficking. That's why it never gets, like, because it's familial abuse, but, like, people, like, continuously, like, nudge it off and they're like, well, that's not human trafficking, that's not human trafficking. It is. So what is it called when... Because I know there's a big difference between, like, you know, being abducted and getting trafficked to, like, another country and being sold off versus... Your parents getting paid to, like, let someone abuse you. It's still considered trafficking. All I, of them? It's all trafficking. And that was, like, the big point of this podcast that I was listening to is she was trafficked that way by family. And what was really frustrating to her and her biggest issue is, like, that people don't take it seriously in the trafficking sense, but it is considered trafficking because you're they're still moving you from person to person. Trafficking is essentially just forcing somebody to do something explicit. Got it without their permission and doing it to multiple people. Okay. So your parents can still traffic you. So to me, it's like, why would they sell their daughter to be trafficked when like they could just traffic her themselves? It's, it would make them more money. So for me, like that's where my head went. Um, unless it's like one of those, like if we're going to talk Casey Anthony things where they're like, we don't want to be parents anymore. I could see that. But I think at that point it's easier to just kill her. Um, yes, yeah, I believe okay. so. So it's like, it, it doesn't make sense yeah. to me. I don't, I think the only way the parents could be involved is if they killed her. Or there was, and I'm going to go a little wild wait, here. Wait, hold on. That kind of leads into my other theory. Are you going to like pull a jump in a Ramsey on me here? Because that's my theory. No. Okay, let's hear it. There's a, another theory that they gave the kids sleeping medicine and they gave her a little too much. Yes. And then she died, and they were like, what do we do, what do we do? That's a popular theory that they were all drugging the kids so that they could party. Yeah. Which gives me Casey Anthony vibes. I don't know if you guys don't know Casey Anthony case. That one's very popular. She got if off. If you don't know the Casey Anthony case, you live under a rock? Yeah, pretty much. John Benet Ramsey was a beauty queen in Boulder, Colorado, so where I'm from. So I grew up on that case. It was around the time that I was born, actually. And, um, or it was a couple years after. But she was a beauty queen. And there's a couple different theories with that. They really tried to play it off, and they never solved it, so nobody ever got arrested. But they really tried to play it off like it was an intruder, but it really, it was either the parents or the theory is the son. So that leads into my next theory. I have a theory that maybe she died accidentally. Maybe one of the siblings did it. Maybe one of the other kids did it, and they all covered it up. Because it was an accident, and they didn't want that kid to be penalized. Or think about what you would do for a parent as a parent if like something happened and it was an accident. Yeah, I feel like in that panic mode, like you would protect your child, whether or not it was going to be like something that they went to jail for, like their kid. Yeah, but like it was enough to like because what hits for me is the fact that the dog hit on stuff in the car and in the apartment, Mm -hmm. and people overlook that all the time. Like, oh, well, that could have just been from the attacker, blah blah blah. And I'm like, "Mm, that's weird. Under the sink, that's weird. So that would be my biggest theory that I do believe in. I do believe she's dead. I don't think she's still living. And I do think that, like, it was an accident. I do. I don't know why, but I just got vibes it's an accident. Yeah, because, like, the parents, yes, gave off very, like, they wanted a lot of media attention. But to me, it gave off them trying to distract from something. It wasn't like, we want the attention. It was like, deflect, deflect, deflect. And that's how I, as a parent, would probably operate if, like, my other kid was in trouble or something like that. So that's my, that's one, the one I believe in the most. There are other ones. Um, It's really big that they talk about, basically, the human trafficking thing and everything like that. And in 2022, so that's what I was going to lead in for an update. 
not my nose, you know. <laughs> they have named official an official suspect in 2022, but they will not give any other information. There's no other information. He's currently incarcerated for something else that they also won't name. So it's like we don't really know what's happening with it, but his name is Christian Bru- Brunecker, and he is a German citizen, and he was there at the time, same time, same place, everything like that. And they're claiming that he is the suspect. Didn't he live nearby, though? I don't know. I think I saw that today, that he lived nearby. Could be. But he is their suspect right now. They're not giving anything else on this case. Now, this is where it gets a little bit wild. Um, So, in... What did I have here? I'm trying to make sure I get all my notes. Um, The biggest news that, like, brought this back to my attention, because, honestly, I'm sure a lot of you are like, why'd you guys choose to talk about Madeline McCann? There's so many cases, especially ones that aren't big. The reason I was excited to talk about it is throughout the years, many women have come out and been like, oh, I'm Madeline McCann. Oh, I'm Madeline McCann. Because, you know, she'd be like 16, 18 now. And, or maybe older, right? No, 16, 18. She's younger than us. She wouldn't be like full grown woman yet, but like she's under 20. Yes. Um, Women are coming out of the woodworks and like, I'm Madeline McCann. I am. Well, through many years of dealing with that, the parents have stopped allowing, like, DNA tests. they kind of just been like, we don't want to do this anymore. Mm-hmm. Well, all of a sudden, and that is a little suspicious to me, because, like, if you're all of a sudden, like, I don't want to do the DNA test anymore, to me that screams, you're like, you know she's dead. You know? Like, why else would you refuse that? But that, beside or the point. Or maybe they're just too tired of being hurt after doing so many DNA that's tests. That's their excuse. I'm not convinced. Oh, that's I their didn't... excuse? Yeah, yeah. I didn't realize you were drinking out of the water. <laughs> you don't like my margarita. It's a little too... It's a lot for me right now. It's fine. I'll drink it. There's a lot of tequila in that. I'm feeling it already. Yeah, I didn't have a lot of tequila in mine. You jipped me. I put the same amount. Um, anyways, back to the point. Um, the biggest thing to me that is kind of hit differently is that there is... A Polish woman that has come out and claimed to be Madeline McCann. I did see her. She has the same. So if you go and Google any picture of Madeline McCann, she has like an eye stigmatism. Yeah. It's it's very rare. Apparently, it's like I don't know the statistics. It makes somebody's me gonna yell like, at me. It gives me goosebumps. Like, yeah. Looking at it. Well, it's one of those things that it's like one in like five hundred people. Have, something ridiculous. Like it's very very rare, but like there is a percentage of the population that has it. Yeah. So, like, it's not outlandish that this, like, Polish girl could have it, but it's also, like, very odd because it's, like, not something common. Um, She was adopted, apparently, or I don't know if she knows she was adopted, but she, like, started to question her parents for a long time. And to the point where her parents are no longer talking to her. Since she's come forward about this, I think I'm Madeline McCann thing, her parents won't talk to her. Her parents won't give her a DNA test. So, like, she had, I guess, suspicions that her parents weren't her parents. She started thinking about it. She looked into the Madeline McCann case. She has the eye thing. She looks very similar to her, and she swears she's Madeline McCann. The last update I got is that Madeline McCann's parents were being very difficult on doing a DNA test. Her parents aren't talking to her, and they won't give her a DNA test, and this girl's just in a limbo. But the authorities are looking into it. She's Polish, and that would really track with the she was sold, she was human trafficked, like, I mean. But... Here's the thing is if she was taken, the more we talk about this, I'm like, yeah, maybe, maybe she's not alive anymore. But if she was taken by someone who maybe wants a kid, right? Mm -hmm. She would have had to been being watched, right? Because why go into a dark bedroom where there's three kids and pick the oldest one in that bedroom? Was she the oldest one? Yeah, it was her and then her two siblings who were very tiny. Okay. I didn't know. I mean... Don't hold me to that, guys. I just... You think you would pick the younger ones, though, because they'd have less recollection. Yes. I don't know. To me, and I'm probably going to get some hate for this, because there's some people that are, like, diehard, like, no, she's out there. I think she's dead. I really do. Um, And I think her parents know that. Whether it was them that did it or not, I think they know. Yeah. Because to refute... I don't know. If I were a parent and my kid was missing and I was still searching for them... I would never stop searching. I would never stop being like, yeah. give him the DNA. You would go Liam Neeson. I would go Liam Neeson. I also, like, all I can think about is there's been fundraiser after fundraiser after fundraiser for this. They have endless resource, resources and money. Everybody in, not only America, the whole entire world wants to solve this case. Yeah. So there's no money limit. So to me, 
why aren't you guys like using all of those dollars to put towards DNA tests? I'd be testing fucking everybody. I'd be running database like database tests through Twenty Three Me, yeah. like all also, of the history I just places. Feel like it's been so long, like that's gotta be so scary to like meet your biological daughter that you don't even know who they are. You knew her when she was what five? Four? I think to a parent, they're frozen at five, and I think that that they're not scared. They're more shocked once they're in it. Because it's not the five-year-old anymore. Yeah. I think they're excited. I think it's more scary for the child. Because you don't know these people. They are strangers. So, so like what strange if, so adults. what if Madeline McCann really is out there just watching all of this? Like, knowing that, like, she, and she is. doesn't want to come forward? Yeah. That could be interesting. I genuinely believe, so hear me out. I think within the next 20, 30 years, there will be no such thing anymore as missing children. Because either your child is dead, or your child, when they're old enough, is in a database... And we know exactly where they are. Yeah, I agree. Like, we're at that point now where we're all doing, I mean, I've done 23andMe. I have not, because it scares me to send my DNA in the mail somewhere. I get that. I did opt out. I'm. This is my PSA to everybody. When you do it, no matter what agency you do it from, don't do it on a health perspective. And I know everybody's going to go, why? That's exactly why I want to get it. It's fine for ancestry, but if you check the box that says, yes, you can check my health on this, what happens is if they have any predispositions, like you might get diabetes, you might have arthritis. If you get it down the line and then you report it to a doctor and this is already technology like wise said, they won't pay for it in insurance. So like that's why they're telling less and less people to go get BRCA tested and stuff like that because like. I've had, um, I had a breast tumor when I was 17. My mom had breast cancer. So naturally they were all like, well, you need to get BRCA tested. My mom went and got BRCA tested. She was a no, but that makes sense for her. She's in her fifties. Like she did that. I'm, I'm in my late twenties. And as I continue to develop, if I had gone and gotten BRCA tested, insurance is going to be harder on covering things for me with breast cancer. They, there's just going to be more hoops. So I did not go get BRCA tested for that reason. Same yeah. thing with those 23 and Me's. They have, like, this whole category you can fill out that's, like, we'll tell you all of the predispositions you'll have for, like, Alzheimer's and all these things. Well, if you do that, you're not going to get any coverage from your insurance. So don't do the health ones. But the hereditary ones are actually kind of fun. I enjoyed it. I want to do it just because, like, I want to know what I am. Like, exactly. You, you should do it. Yeah. Because, you know, <laughs> you don't have a dad. <laughs> Well, the, this this episode comes after. Yeah, I've already how, said that. I love how my mom is like a list celebrities. <laughs> We're not Z anymore. So you guys obviously probably watched Anaïs's episode before you saw this, and it's already aired. So yeah. like, I feel like we can talk about it. I need to. We've already talked about that. I need to stop making dad jokes to Jordan, but at the same time, I don't. And I was really dreading when that aired. I was like, Oh, is Crystal gonna be mad at me? And Crystal texted her today, and she's like, love this shout-out on the A-list celebrities. And I was like, I was like, so she doesn't want me to stop talking about you don't have a dad. I mean, maybe she likes it. And she, she's like, yeah, F him. She's probably like, yeah, I'm the, I'm the cool parent that raised that. Well, yeah, I mean, in a way, my mom was my mom and my dad. Yeah, there you go. So technically, I do have a dad. She just has a vagina, not a penis. I don't think it works that way. I don't think um, you get to be mom and dad. You can have two moms. You could have a mom and a dad. You could have transgender parents. But, like, I don't think you get to be mom and dad. Well, or is that a new what thing is that, that I don't like, know about? What is that called? Like, fluid? Like, gender fluid? Gender fluid. That's what that's called, right? Yeah, but she's not mom-dad fluid. She It's like they-them, like mom-dad. No, but she can't be both. I thought that's what they-them means. No, they-them means that you don't want to identify as a gender most of the time. I thought. Actually, I'm sure there's an umbrella for it, and we're probably going to sound really ignorant for not knowing that. But I was under the impression that they, them, were people that have chosen not to identify with a gender. My cousin is a they, them, and she, I haven't said she. They don't want to be recognized as a gender. Okay. Interesting. I always thought it was both. And it's really hard, and they know that, but like, I grew up with them as a she. Yeah. So, like, I have to really check myself. Normally, I just call them by their name. And it Did makes it easier. Did they change their name? No. But their name's gender neutral. What is it? Taylor. Okay. That's cute. But it's always been fascinating to me. We're not super close, so it's not like I have, like, a ton yeah. of information on that. But um, it's always been fascinating to me because they are dating what I believe to be a male, heterosexual male. I don't know that. 
he could be fluid as well. I think his pronouns are he, him, though. So I, that was just always, like, very interesting to me. It's like... Yeah. But we, I just had we're not really, here for the sexuality talk. Cause really, really weird deja vu. Is it the dog playing it kind of with your me out. husband out know. there? Probably. I don't know. We're not here to talk on gender identity, though, because yeah, we, we're not good at that. Let so. me... I want to play this TikTok because I feel like she had some really good theories. We're just play- This podcast is now a podcast of people's TikToks. Based off of research that I did. But please add more if you think there are more. Number one, of course, is the sex trafficking theory that she was kidnapped and sold into sex slavery. Number two, same scenario, but the McCann's are the ones that sold her. Number three is the drug overdose theory that I mentioned earlier. Number four is that there was a Portuguese predator in the area. That's kind of similar to one and two, but number five is that she was taken by a childless couple. Number six is maybe she was found immediately, but they continued to roll with it for the intention. Number seven is the tourism theory that maybe this was all planted just so they would get people to stop coming to Pride to lose. Number eight is that Madeline actually wandered out on her own and she got lost or maybe died after just leaving the apartment herself. And then this last one, number nine, I couldn't believe this. There's even a theory, number nine, that Madeline didn't exist at all. That's wild. In the next part, I'll talk about updates in the case, but please. I'm sorry, what? Also, I want to <laughs> touch on what was seven again. Seven was, um, no, I'm spacing on what it was. I remember, like, I was like, mm, seven, no. That, we have no hands. This is really know, hard to but, operate yeah. our phones. Um, I don't believe that she didn't exist at all. That's so far-fetched. Oh, the tourism part. Yeah. Clearly it didn't work because we're literally going there for my bachelor party. <laughs> so, like, awkward. <laughs> Yikes. I, don't, I feel like actually that would have been the opposite effect because true crime, like, fans are hefty. Yeah. And, like, that just probably brought them so much tourism. I bet you people come there all the time and go to that resort, and they're like, Oh, for so sure. So, Madeline McCann disappeared. Do you think I have like a theory. museum now? Like, the Amity Horror no, House is? I don't think so. But I did actually have a theory that I wanted to bring to you that I completely forgot because I haven't thought about it in days. It was back when I was watching a documentary on it. But um, I also thought about the fact that that hotel, after that, was popping off with press with people trying to come help, with all of these yeah. things. And obviously we would assume that, like, because Kyle and I had this discussion, like, wow, a girl going missing here, is that bad publicity or good publicity? Because in the end, they had hundreds of thousands of people coming through for press, for helping finding her and everything. So even if they gave the McCann's a free room for months to look for her, they were making so much money on people staying there. So there's this theory about the hotel that for, I think, 20 no 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 not 20 days 20 people came in and out of, of that, that room. house and room before they taped it off yeah no that's what i said earlier i think yeah. that's part of the problem is like that's where they say they said that like the portuguese police don't know how to handle things it's like what were they doing like that was the most shoddy police work they could have done yeah so i think there's a lot to that as well I think, no, I think that the shoddy police work is the reason we haven't caught anybody. I think that if the McCanns were covering it up or were responsible, they're like, God bless that they fucked this up so bad. Because it's really the Portuguese police's problem. They so screwed the pooch. You think she's dead? Yeah, I do. I think she's dead. I, like I'm saying, like, I think that we're just in a world right now where it's like too easy to get access to your DNA and like figure out where you came from. You would know if you didn't have the same parents. The only other answer is that, and when I say that she's dead, even if she did get human trafficked, she'd be dead by now. Because the reality is, is when you get human trafficked, not by family, like not familial yeah. um, human trafficking, they don't let you live past a certain age because you become invaluable after that. When you're like child human trafficking. It's different when it's like adult female human trafficking, but if you're applying to a certain audience and like, this is going to sound so bad. I feel like human traffickers niche themselves, just like we do on social and stuff like that. You find your audience. And I don't think that, like, if you're, like, in that circle or in that life, if you're a human trafficker, I don't think you're going, mm, I'll take a little girl over there, I'll take a little boy over there, I'll take a grown woman over here, I'll take this over there. I think that they pick their focus and they dispose of what doesn't work for them anymore. And that might be completely wrong, and I hope there's an expert out there that's listening that tells me I'm wrong, but part of me thinks that that's how that would work. So if your expertise is little girls, 
there was an age where they were like, you're done. Yeah. Because like, she's at that age now. Or do they sell them off to someone who maybe wants that? Could be. Could be that I she's know. just... I really want to hope that, like, she's just out there. And See, she I don't... Know, I want to hope that, like, she knows who she is. Okay. Because I was going to say, I hope that she's not out there. Because that would have been a lifetime of suffering. I rather wish that she were dead, to be completely yeah. honest. And as a parent, I would hope that they feel that way too. Because the trauma that's going to come from that, and like, I'm not saying people can't heal from it, and we see it every day, like people heal from Millions that. of dollars in therapy. Millions. It's not even the money. It's like, she'll never function as a normal adult, ever. So, part of me is kind of like... A part of me like has this theory where like, she, she was trafficked, and she escaped, and now she is just out there, and... Hopefully Jordan's she got looking some, for the best. Yeah, I hope she got some, like, plastic surgery to, like, cover it up. And she just knows who she is and she just doesn't want to come forward. She just wants to live her life. Because once she does come, if if and when she does come forward and people know it's her, her life is changing. Well, they're actually pretty good about, there's, like, protective services where she could come forward and they could not say who it is. She could go to be with her parents and they could go into protective services. They could. She and wants to live like I, that. I want to say this as if anybody of importance listens to this podcast. If you're out there. <laughs> Nikki Minaj is listening. I know she is. <laughs> <laughs> Not what I meant. I meant more like missing people or people that know that like yeah. they aren't who they belong to. Or like maybe you you know you're adopted and you know who your parents are and you're scared to like encroach on that. Um, there is privacy out there for those people and like you will be okay. Um, coming forward, you can make sure that you ask and request certain protective services and I don't think that that should discourage anybody yeah. from, like, finding out who they truly are. Or, like, punishing people that could be your birth family like that. Because that's... If this really was she was human trafficked, I will feel terrible for all the things I've said about the McCanns. But, like, those poor people. Like, it's just one of those things where I think that... I think right now, if it really was human trafficking, she's better off dead. But at the same time, this um, Polish girl has come out and she's like, I had a fine childhood. She that came would out be because fine. her grandma made a comment to her. Yes. But she's not saying what the comment is, right? I don't know if she did. I didn't see anything. Like I saw about a comment, but like I didn't yeah. see what the comment was. And then she like started looking into it. But like, she's what, 17? Are you not online at all? Well, think about it. I've never looked at my parents and been like, could you have stolen me? Well, you look just like your mom, so I hope you wouldn't think. <laughs> I don't look like my mom. Um, there is a photo of you on your Instagram that I was scrolling and I was like, that is Toby. <laughs> Yay, Toby! <laughs> no, um, I guess you're right. But like, I mean, like there are kids out there that don't look like their parents and I don't yeah. think your natural reaction is like, these aren't my parents. Like, you know, so it's just, it's one of those things and like, we're hearing more and more and it's because of all these DNA abilities now. We're hearing more and more about kids that were kidnapped at birth or switched at birth or things like that. We're mm. hearing more about them. It happened all the time in the 90s and nobody knew because, like, we didn't have DNA. And now we have, like, DNA testing and it's changed everything. So I just, I really, I don't want to discourage anybody that's, like, questioning things. Look into it. Check out your shit. I'm not discounting the Polish girl. I'm not saying she's wrong. I actually hope she is Madeline McCann because that's a perfect scenario where we get the best of both worlds of she found out who she was. These parents are happy and they can live a peaceful life. And this girl didn't have a terrible childhood. So are they going to do a DNA test? I don't know. That's where they kind of left us. The McCanns didn't want to do it and her parents wouldn't let her do it. So it's like, I, I can't wait to see how it pans out because in hindsight, like, and maybe we can do like a little update on like another video, yeah. like just before we start, if we ever hear anything. But to me, it's like, it's weird to me that the McCanns don't want to do it. To me, like I said, that screams that they know she's dead. If you're starting to refuse the possibility of somebody being your daughter, then it's because you think that she's dead or you know that she's dead. I never really think about that. But I, yeah. I mean, if I were a parent, I'd be, if all of a sudden I'm like, if I were ever like, mm, no, like that's, that's not my daughter. You should be like, but why not yeah. check? And if I'm still refusing, then that usually means it's because I know something's up. And that's why I do have my like reservations with the McCann family but as far as the Polish girl, I do think that she, um, I don't know, I, I don't think she's doing it for media attention. I haven't gotten that vibe. I think she's genuinely confused. I think she's having a really hard time with it. I think her parents are super sus. Like, I don't know. That's the most yeah. slang term I've I hope that if sus, she, 
<laughs> I hope that if she ends up not being Madeline McCann, that, you know, maybe she finds out who she is. Yeah. Yeah, me too. That's like the best of both worlds out of her situation. Like, like that she finds what really happened to her. Yeah. And I can't wait to hear that story. I would That's love to cover that story. Yeah, yeah, we'll have to cover that. But, I mean, clearly something is up. So, yeah, something's fishy. Something's fishy with that. The eye thing is just, like, a real trigger for me that I'm like, mm, that's... You can't replicate that. You can't just give yourself that. So, it's like, that to me is like, okay. Yeah. But that is the best case scenario, is this girl is Madeline McCann. Because if it is, that means that she... Yes, she was kidnapped, but she had a good childhood. And my other fear, like you said, where I think she's out there, blah, blah, blah... If she was human trafficked in any way, she didn't have a good childhood. So, like, I don't yeah. think it bodes well. And at that point, I don't know. Or the other theory, maybe she did wander off. I don't believe that. I really don't. They would have found her. But what what gets me is the front door was open, but also the window was open. So, like... See, that screams cover-up to me, because why would the front door and the window be open? Right? You'd pick one. Also, if you're stealing a child, you're probably going to close the window. I don't know. Or the door. I th- I <laughs> do think she's dead, and I think that there was definitely, it was, I think it was an accident. I don't think it was on purpose, but I do think there was an accident, and all the parents covered it up. Do you think it was, like, <clears throat> accident as in, like, the sleeping medication theory, or just, like, something else? Sleeping meds, or I think one of the kids killed her. I don't think it was one of the parents. I really don't. I think yeah. one of the children, there was an accident. I think there was an accident. I really do. I think maybe she hit her head, or one of the kids hit her too hard with a toy or something, that would explain the blood. And it's not a theory I've heard talked about, but I do think that maybe the kids were involved. I mean, the so the quote, I can't stop looking at the color killer. I'm so sorry. Um, the <laughs> quote that the mom said when she found out and then she went back to the parents, it was like, Madeline's missing. She said they took her. Jordan? is really on I can tell I can see it in your <laughs> eyes I know you so well she thinks that it's Jeffrey Epstein I mean I know I what you're thinking and I know like she's I dedicated. don't think it was straight up like Jeffy boy that just like walked in there drink your margarita yeah drink that I yeah um, I don't think it was like him that like straight up walked in there and like got her but like that she wouldn't just go back and say they took her unless she didn't say here's, that here's my theory. best theory I can give you I strongly believe that you quite literally, there's so many better people to like, for Jeffrey Epstein to go get in America. Why did he go all the way to Portugal to get a child? So Mm -hmm. you don't know the Jeffrey Epstein story then. Okay. Well, we're going to talk about it in a future episode. We've got to close this off though. We've got to go party. We keep getting calls. We're just trying to get drunk. (laughs) We're just trying to have a good time on the party bus and I got to hit up the party bus. I got to make sure like we're good and on time. We're going on a party bus. But suits. I can't wait to hear everybody else's theory. Yeah, what do you guys think? Do you guys think she is alive? Do you think she's out there? Do you think the British girl is her? She's Polish. Polish. Close. She's <laughs> Polish. Um, final theory. What do you think it was? I think she was trafficked. I think that there was an accident with the children at home. Or the sleeping medication theory. I really do. Those are our theories. Combat us. Agree with us. We no would love comments. to hear it. No, leave the hate comments. Jordan loves them. Jordan texted me our first hate comment the other day, and she's like, oh, my God, we have haters. And I was like, I literally hate you. (laughs) Okay, bye. Bye.